In this video, let's take a look at the texture of pores. Study of textures is quite an interesting but very time consuming task. Then why is it so important to study them? What information they give us? Understanding texture of pore minerals is essential since they provide evidences of the nature of such processes as initial ore deposition, post-depositional re-equilibration or metamorphism, deformation, annealing and meteoric weathering. Recognition and interpretation is often the most important step in understanding the origin and post-depositional history of an ore. Remember, the interpretation is simultaneously one of the most difficult but yet very satisfying tasks in ore petrological studies. Some facts to remember. You must know that the oxides, disulfides, arsenides and sphalerite are the most refractory ore minerals and are likely to preserve evidence of their original conditions of formation than are minerals such as pyrotides or copper iron sulfides. Argentite, sulfur salts and native metals are among the most readily re-equilibrated ore minerals and thus are the least likely to reflect initial formation conditions. The standard textbooks group the textures into various categories based on number of parameters. For instance, textures related to genesis, textures related to deformation, etc. I am not going to explain in detail the classification scheme in this video, but on the other hand, I will talk about some commonly encountered textures of great importance in terms of their genesis. This would help you to get a fundamental idea on the genetic aspects of the ore body that you are dealing with. The idea which you can use further to build a genetic model, of course, using more data. You will have to integrate the textural information with structural, geochemical, geophysical and very importantly geological data sets in order to build a confident genetic model of a particular ore deposit. Okay, let's begin with internal textures of individual grains. We have zoned texture manifested in terms of hardness. Zoning generally results from interruptions in growth changes in the physical characteristics of alternating bands or the presence of inclusions in some bands and not in others. Zoning normally indicates either repeated and renewed growth or rapid growth and a low temperature of formation from an impure fluid. Next we have stoss side growth which is a form of zoning but with bands on one or more sides of a crystal or wider than on the other sides. This indicates a preferential deposition direction that is the direction of the fluid movement that resulted in built up wider bands. This texture is common in crystals growing in open cavities and wax. Subparallel and radial growth texture is noted in minerals which naturally grow in open spaces and form columnar, prismatic or leaf-like forms. Development of this texture requires uniform supply of material from all directions as opposed to stoss side growth. Next we have twinning. The twins can be of various types, for example growth twins where the mineral duo generally does not exhibit uniform thickness and are interwoven and unevenly distributed throughout the sample. If it is inversion twins, it will be characterized by spindle-shaped intergrowths of minerals that are generally not parallel. Pressure, lamellar or deformation twins are frequently noted associated with ores that have undergone cataclysis, deformation or incipient recrystallization. The lamellae in these twins are of uniform thickness as opposed to growth twins. Next we shall move on to single grain external textures that defines external morphology of the individual grains. Xenomorphic, hypodiomorphic and idiomorphic are the terms used to describe the external growth or shape of the individual crystals. For instance, xenomorphic texture also known as allotriomorphic texture is a term generally applied to rock in which the crystals are anhedral that is they lack the development of proper crystal phases. 
The texture is commonly seen in multi-mineralic aggregates due to various rates of crystallization. On the other hand, ipidiomorphic texture, also known as panidiomorphic texture, which describes the growth of euhedral crystals, that is minerals with development of perfect crystal faces. Euhedral growth mainly occurs in open cavities when either a continual or intermittent supply of fluid has been available. It is virtually impossible for this texture to grow in monomineralic aggregates. The texture that falls between these two variants is called as hypidiomorphic texture. The mineral crystals are subhedral in which one of the mineral components forms first or grows at a differential rate of crystallization as in porphyritic or porphyroblastic textures. Another way of looking at single grain external textures is in terms of simple and complex bonding. The texture that results from simple bonding is equigranular texture which indicates a slow growth with no preferential direction. Smooth intergrain contact characterizes the equigranular texture. On the other hand, complex bonding is a descriptive term that covers virtually all crystal bonding textures and give rise to numerous textural subtypes that we are going to see in the coming slides. Vein filling textures can be of two types, crustification banding and comb or cockade texture. Crustification banding results from successive deposition of minerals inward from open fractures or fissure walls. It may be multimineralic or rhythmic, showing different depositional events, whereas comb or cockade texture results from growth of crystals outwards from the walls of open fractures. I hope you are all with me. Hey, by the way, if you have any doubts, please put them in the comment box below and I will get back to them. Let's move on to the intergrowth textures. We have two common variants in this, emulsoid and marmakitic textures. Emulsoid texture or an emulsion resembles exolution texture. It takes the form of one mineral finely disseminated in another more abundant mineral. Genetically, it can be treated as the micro component which may have been trapped during crystallization or it could perhaps also represent incomplete replacement. Marmakatic texture is an interfingering texture also known by various other names such as eutectic, cotectic, granophyric and graphic texture. It is more common in silicate rocks than in ore forming minerals. Appears as the growth of two or more minerals, the marmakatic texture in variable amounts with mutually rounded boundaries. We then have aggregate textures with two variants, brexia and rhythmic aggregates. The brexiated variant and the rhythmic variant. Brexiated textures are resultants of secondary tectonic process such as vein fault reactivation, Angular fragments of ores, gang or wall rock lithologies may all be part of this texture. Size and shape can be variable in scale. Rhythmic textures result from numerous depositional processes of a primary or secondary origin where we have repeated mineral sequences. Some of the examples we have already looked at in the previous slides are zoned, coliform, crustified textures. Moving on to the textures generally associated with magmatic ores, we have cumulus texture which results from the gravitative settling of denser ore minerals within a crystallizing magma. The most common example is chromite which occurs as a cumulus phase related to pyroxenes. The cumulates are named according to their dominant mineralogy and the percentage of minerals or crystals to their ground mass. The three different types of cumulates are adcumulates, mesocumulates and orthocumulates. The adcumulates contain 100 to 93 percent accumulated magmatic crystals in a fine grained ground mass. 
whereas in mesocumulates 93 to 85 percent accumulated minerals are present in a ground mass and in orthocumulates we have 85 to 75 percent accumulated mineral crystals in the ground mass the two more variants of textures associated with magmatic ores are intergranular and egg solution texture in the intergranular texture the ore minerals occur as an intergranular anhedral phase relative to the other gang minerals the texture develops when the ore mineral crystallizes late in the magmatic sequence relative to the other gang minerals so that the ore mineral takes up the shape of the intergranular spaces left behind whereas in the egg solution texture one of the mineral phase separates from another as a result of incomplete miscibility or mixing during cooling and such mineral phase will have a tendency to concentrate along certain crystallographic directions for example cleavage planes egg solution textures usually indicate a slow or intermediate cooling rate Caution may be applied while differentiating egg solution textures and replacement textures as it is quite a bit difficult to tell them apart. We then have replacement textures related to hydrothermal scarn ore deposits. Replacement textures develop when new mineral or of partly or totally different chemical composition grows in the body of an existing mineral or mineral aggregates. Repl replacement is accompanied by very little or no change in the volume of the rock. However, in practice, this process is accompanied by expansion or contraction. Lastly, we have open space filling textures which are also related to hydrothermal scarn ore deposits. Open space filling is common at shallow depths where brittle rocks deform by fracturing. rather than by plastic flow at these shallow depths ore bearing fluids may circulate freely within fractures depositing ore and gang minerals when there is sudden or abrupt changes in pressure and or temperature and as such open space filling texture are different from those resulting due to replacement that's it guys we have reached to an end of this video however This will not be an end to the vast topic of textures of ore minerals. There are still much more to it, such as textures related to sedimentation, textures related to metamorphism, deformation, and many more. I leave it to you guys to explore more on the most beautiful topic of ore mineralogy, that is, ore textures. Go crazy! If you have any queries or suggestions, please drop a message in the comment box below, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you have a nice day meet you all in the next episode where i'll be talking on paragenesis and zoning bye bye